Hey guys, I'm Racing Tree Side, and I got a video for you guys today. And it's a track guide, the final one of the season at Homestead Miami Speedway. So, and for this, that's it for this year. Obviously, next year we might be dealing with the new rule package with the lower downforce, which I'm looking forward to because, well, why not? Took our worst fire away, so now at least we gotta drive the cars again. So what I did for a 30.75, I believe, is what I hit. There's two ways to hit that at this track. Possibly three, because the lines you can all use. Progressively banked, I believe, one of the first progressively banked tracks NASCAR used. Back in 03, I guess. Or whenever they repaved this to make this the new configuration, I don't remember. But what I did, I used a 12 to 1 steering ratio and a negative 2 offset. And as usual, I don't state this enough, this is always going to be for the fixed series. For the fact is that open series, everyone has a different setup. Everyone has different driving styles. I don't know. I can only give a base off of the fix, so that's what these are all for. So, the default was a 12-1 plus 6. We're using a minus 2, so let's see how this lap was done. So here we go. And for an exterior cam. There we go. Alright, that's the best I could do in a few minutes practice at 20% track usage. Remember that. I always use 20% doesn't really make that big of a difference from green to 20, so I use that. Just to get a feeling of what the, some other rubber will be like on the track. So we're going to make our way to 1, and as I said, there's two ways to approach this. At least in 1. Uh, just go to 1 here. Alright. Right as the safer barrier begins, you can see right here where this line is. Uh, might be a little bit later. No, that's right. So right when the safer barrier ends, I'm getting off the throttle and I'm driving it to the bottom of the track. You can also take a really high line if you wish all the way through the corner, but uh, just for this lamp at the bottom, which we can actually use now. So... Yeah, once you feel it start turning to the bottom and you feel like you can get it to turn, the throttle will actually help turn the car more than you want it to. And be careful not to go too low, because if you touch that white line, it's just going to throw everything out of whack. At least in my experience. So we're just going to... You see, I've been on half throttle pretty much through the entire corner, but once you feel the stick here in the bottom... Get on the throttle, and here's where things get tricky because you're going to start to want to drift outward, and the banking is going to help grab the car because it gets more and more banked the higher up you go. And just do it two times here and here. You can see here at the way exit, turn two, the car's starting to rotate quite a bit, so you want to straighten out more the higher you get to the outside wall. And then you're still on the throttle at this point, so power off. All the way down the back stretch. Going into three, similar approach. Next up, I dive in much, much deeper. I don't know, about a car length or two before a white line, which would be, hell, between... Yeah, this is actually a hard thing to explain here, because you can't see the line until you're too close to it. So you can see it right here. 
So I don't know, let me figure out a way I can explain this here. So when my car approaches this Ford billboard, assuming your graphic settings show it, between this pillar and this pillar, you know, looking at this bar here, really the only way I can explain it, or if you've done many laps and you know where this white line's gonna be, about two car lengths before I get to it, I'm letting off the throttle and I'm not driving to the bottom, I'm driving to pretty much one groove up, which you can see the rubber laid down there. Hopefully. Because the car is much different here in 3 and 4 than it is in 1 and 2. It gets real tight once you get back to the throttle at this point. So pretty much right in the center of the corner. You can see, you see the one that it rolled down. So about the center of the corner, 160 miles an hour. I start picking the throttle back up and stay in this middle groove. And again, similar approach to 1 and 2. Drive it off by going further and further out to the wall. Because the banking is going to grab you. But beware, you can see right here, the car's getting loose and really weird on me. And it just power it off. And I don't know how much this lap time is going to improve. I don't, don't really know. So I do these on Monday, uh, you know, there's a league race after this, and then I'll probably get more accurate times, but 37.5 is probably where I'm going to stay after the week. Anyway, for the fact is, tire conservation, and I'll be moving around, and this track is going to be fun for the three grooves you can use in one. Three and four, not so much. It gets super tight in three and four up top. But that's just my experience. So glad for this new build and everything, and... If I don't get any videos out for, say, a winter fix league that I plan on doing, or GT3 track guides, if I can get someone who's good at road racing to help me, this is probably the last one for the season, and next one will be at Daytona, even though... Why? Anyways, this has been Sim Racing Side. Thanks for watching. See you on the track.